Hey, we are finishing strong with week six. We hope that you have enjoyed the Dream of You online Bible study. There's still a few more chapters left in the book that we will cover this week, but we have another opportunity to hear from author Joe Saxton. And Joe, I know I'm excited to hear what you have to say to wrap us up. And so I'm going to go ahead and give you the floor early on, and then we'll, we'll wrap it up together at the end. Okay, great. Thank you. Well, first of all, well done, everybody. Um, we've journeyed, have we not? <laughs> we've journeyed we sure together. <laughs> and, and, um, and it's great. It's great to know that you are encountering God in spaces that maybe he's not had opportunity to get to before and that you are discovering wonderful things about him. But this is, to, in many ways, the end and the beginning of a journey. And so I simply want to remind you of a very familiar invitation that Jesus gives us as we go through this stuff, as we walk through and keep on walking on with him. You know, the great thing about the Lord is that he's given us a fresh identity and he gives us a new purpose. The great thing about the Lord is that he is um, changing us from glory to glory. The great thing about the Lord is that he's not just kind of waving you off into the distance saying, (laughs) go, go, go get it done. Um, He, there is an, I am with you always. (laughs) There is an, I am here for you, with you, doing it with you. And there's the invitation is this from Matthew chapter seven, um, verse seven, where it says, keep on asking and you'll receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking and you will find, keep on knocking and the door will be open to you. And it's Jesus basically showing his disciples what it looks like to pray. And maybe in some of your translations before you've seen ask and you'll receive, seek and you'll find knock and the door will be open to you. But in the Greek text, it is in the present continuous text. Um, But um, it's in the present continuous. And basically what that means, it's reminding you that what Jesus is fully saying here is ask, but keep on going. Don't stop. You don't have to do a one and done on your asking here. You don't have to do a one and done on your seeking. You don't have to do a one and done on your knocking. He's asking you and he's inviting you to keep on engaging with him, to keep on asking, keep on praying about these things, keep on seeking him because you'll find him. Keep on knocking on the door saying, come on, Lord, help me make a breakthrough here. Keep on inviting him into this process. And the reason why I feel this is hugely important for us on this when we're dealing with something like identity is because we can get to that kind of expectation where we feel we should be done with this by now. Mm -hmm. It's like, I'm a grown woman. Surely I should be over my past. Oh, I'm married now. Surely I shouldn't still be feeling these things. Oh, I'm, we somehow give ourselves these arbitrary levels where we feel we should have been an A grade Christian. Yeah. I should be past this. Should you? Did, did God say that to you or was that just your human expectations? <laughs> you know, you know yeah. uh, I should be over this by, uh, uh, or we're shocked when something that we have got past somehow makes a comeback and we're like, whoa, was it not real? Mm-hmm. You know, I, I, I dealt with that eating disorder years ago. Why am I really struggling again? Well, circumstances are still happening. Yeah. Life is still happening to you. People are still happening to you. We are being triggered and, and struck by all kinds of things. So first of all, if, if you are wrestling with the fact that you're not past it yet, shame off you, sisters, off you. Because God doesn't want you to feel condemned. The Bible says there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. That's true for you today. That you don't have to feel the shame of that. But here, not only do you not have to feel the shame, receive this invitation from Jesus. You can keep on engaging with this stuff until you're talking with him about it face to face. Mm. You can keep on seeking him until you find him face to face. You can keep on knocking on the door. And that's not to say that that it's necessarily going to take that long for these things to happen. But just to let's just take the shame off the idea that you need to be past this by some arbitrary date. I say this to you to take off the expectation that you've got to perform your way to be a better, good dream of you living Christian for Jesus. Mm -hmm. But that what he's inviting you into here is to simply keep on walking with him in these things. Keep on talking with him about these things. Keep on asking him. Keep on seeking him. Keep on knocking on those doors because Jesus is with you in it all the way. I like how you 
pretty much just summed it up by keep going. Whatever that looks like. It doesn't have to be a, a massive yeah. act. Um, it could just be the next right step. It can be a small yeah. shuffle in the right direction, but just keep going, keep moving. Uh, I think you I think you said that wonderfully. Um, all right, so before we wrap up our time together, which is very mm. sad, I must say, this has been an absolute delight. Is there anything you. that you want to say to <laughs> the OBSers that are listening to these odd teachings? Yeah, I was reminded of what the first moment, one moment. Um, I was 18 years old and I came back to the Lord at Bible College, which is a whole other story in itself and um, <laughs> another book. Um, but <laughs> I came back to the Lord and I remember hearing the preacher, um, that he was a principal of the college, Dr. Reverend Dr. William Davis, a mighty, mighty man of God, who said these words. Um, he, said, he said these words, which have stayed with me 30 years on. And he said, God's hold on you is stronger than your hold on him. And, and then he leaned forward and he kind of, he pointed at every, like this, he pointed at everybody and he said, and he has no intention of letting you go. Mm. And I simply want to offer what he said to us then, to you, because when he said those words, I thought I'm surrounded. I'm surrounded by the greatness of God. I'm surrounded by the might of God. I'm surrounded by the power of God. I'm surrounded by the kindness of God. Yeah. I'm surrounded by the... And, I haven't got the words for it, the bigness of God. (laughs) I'm surrounded by the bigness of God and he's holding me in this. I can't do this because I'm falling to pieces Mm -hmm. and I can't even count all the pieces that there are. But it was strangely reassuring. And I sobbed when he said those words. I sobbed and I sobbed and I sobbed for hours. I was that person at church who just needed to be past the Kleenex. Um, (laughs) I sobbed, but I, and I sobbed out of, release and relief to know that someone else was holding this Mm. and I offer it to you God's hold on you God's hold on your identity God's hold on your story God's hold on his dream for your life his purposes he has for you are stronger way stronger than your hold on him but he has no intention of letting each and every one of you he has no intention of letting you go That's good, Joe. If you had a mic in front of you, I'm sure you would drop it. (laughs) Um, And so I just want to say thank you so much for giving us the space to wrestle, the um, opportunity to just breathe and take a moment to process and ultimately to heal. Joe, you presented um, scripture and just different biblical truths in a way that I think really are um, just going to meet women where they are. And so I just want to say thank you for writing these words. Thank you for being with us for six weeks. And um, we are just very grateful for you. So to the OBSer that's listening, you guys, this has been wonderful. You can always go back and listen to these again and again and again. And thank you for studying the dream of you with us. We'll talk to you later. Bye.